Hi guys, this is the Greenwood Operational Video 2, I guess you would say. Uh, I've had a lot of nice comments uh, from the board about uh, my setup, and I appreciate all those comments. I've also had a lot of uh, questions regarding the open system, so I figured I'd do another video. Maybe I'll try to answer some. It's uh, the Greenwood uh, GW100, and uh, it's set up out here in the garage. Uh, a little dusty and sooty and so forth, but uh, I just kind of got home from work and uh, tossed some stuff in, got it going. It's smoking a little bit. I have the exhaust fan that I covered in video one. I can kick that on up top and it just draws all the smoke out. Works well, a little loud, but it works. Uh, again, normally uh, when it's up and running full bore, it wouldn't be smoking so much. I'm burning actually some cherry right now. It's, uh, the cherry's got a little bit of moisture in it, more than I would like. But all in all, it burns well. The uh, system I'm running is an open system. That is a 55-gallon drum that I installed myself. I bolted it to a stand and I welded up and so forth. The poles are sitting on the floor and it's it's secured to the wall. Um, what I simply did is I came up with a 55 gallon uh, tap fitting that threads in. The copper pipe that you see right here, if the system ever does boil over, which fortunately it has not, it would boil up into that pipe. Uh, there's a stand pipe in the tank that uh, it would just begin to fill the tank and then as the system cooled down and required water, recovery or makeup water, it simply comes out of the other fitting in the tank, travels through this line and then it feeds down uh, into the inlet on the back of the boiler. So that's the in-feed side and of course the out-feed is on the top. Um, the on this side over here what I have is if it ever would boil over I don't think there's even enough liquid in the system to fill that 55 gallon drum but if it did uh, and it really boiled over that's an overflow that simply for safety comes down to the floor and just into a five gallon bucket which wouldn't do much but uh, it would keep stuff from splattering all over the place but as I said it is to date it has never boiled over on me um, the other uh, question that comes up a lot on the board is uh, the digital controller and since I just got home and just kind of got it going again right now it's at 143 degrees the system is still controlled by the aquastat which is right here flow switch in the back which if the circulator pump ever quit and the flow of liquid was interrupted it would shut the entire system down so these are still the two primary controls the digital controller is an add-on and what it does is it monitors the system it's kinda nice because it will tell me my high temperature for the day at one point the boiler hit 180 degrees uh, and it will also tell me the low temperature for the day which is at 140 and that's good because it told, tells me that if when it hit 140 it tripped itself closed and when I say tripped itself closed uh, what it does here I'll show you in a second right now the dampers open because it's calling for heat um, I'm gonna trip I'm gonna trip the unit closed simply gonna shut it off and when it trips closed it allows the damper to shut it overrides the aquastat right now the aquastat should be saying hey keep that damper open I need to make heat but when the water temperature drops below 140 or 140 or below it will close the damper that traps the heat inside the boiler in the refractory and it keeps the uh, water temperature going to and from the house at 140 or hopefully a little above even on the coldest days uh, it's always been about 138, 139, 140. Uh, when it does trip out, it would be flashing red here on the screen, telling me that it canceled itself out. I simply reset it. It's going to take a second to calibrate. It's saying, okay, 142, I need heat. Uh, the house is calling for heat. So right there, it locked itself on. And at this point now, it is in the process of opening the damper so the motors moving on the side 
and the damper plate will begin to open. Mine moves very slowly. I don't know if all the units work that way, but uh, but mine's been working. So it'll pull that damper open, and that that of course will uh, allow oxygen in, and then fuel the uh, fire, flame the fire. So. Um, it's an awesome unit. If it burned out tomorrow, I would replace it immediately. It's it does work well in keeping the return temp at around 140 or not much lower. There's a lot of discussion on the forum that when you get below 140 degrees on return temperatures, that's what can cause a lot of the creosote and moisture condensation issues which over time becomes caustic to the inside of the boiler and the tubes and so forth and can destroy the whole unit. So for me it was worth it. I, I believe the controller at the time was 275 or $300 and uh, I think it was a, a good investment to protect the unit. The other thing that it will do also is I can set it for a maximum high. I have it set at 190 if if I also over temp at 190 it will close the damper so this also acts as an additional boil over so I have the expansion tank if it does boil over I have the digital controller as an, uh, another backup and then the other question that's been coming up on the uh, forum is the battery backup that I have I have an SEC it's uh, made by Surefire it's a stove sentry it's a model SF512. Uh, it's rated for 500 to 650 watts. And what it does is it's mounted, I have it obviously mounted close to the boiler. It is wired, uh, hooked into two deep cycle batteries. They're wired in series. And what that does, if I uh, pull the plug, the, uh, the boiler itself, the green one is plugged into the Surefire stove sentry. If I pull this plug, it's going to simulate losing power to the garage. And what will happen is, uh, I wish I could show you all this, but I'll pull the plug. The stove sentry immediately kicks in, and it's got a cooling fan. It's now converting 12 volt DC or 24 volt DC to uh, 110 AC. And what that does is, without interruption, it keeps the entire system running. So, according to the manufacturer specifications, with one battery, with one battery, it will keep the unit running for eight hours. And with the two batteries, the way I have it set up, I'm supposed to get approximately 20 hours. What I did is I plugged it back in. The stove sentry shuts off immediately. Uh, it starts charging the batteries so they're always fresh charged and ready to go and then again it's uninterrupt, uninterrupted on the controls. Um, I, you can live with it I'm sure as most guys probably are. I just know that you know at two o'clock in the morning when the power goes out it saves me from jumping out of bed in a panic and running uh, to check on the boiler. I know that everything's going to keep functioning as it should and, and as I said I might have overkill here between the open system with the expansion tank, the digital control and the Surefire Stove Sentry but in three and a half years, almost four seasons of running the system I have never had a, uh, had a boil over. So uh, the unit works well. I'm very pleased with it all in all. The um, company as most people know Greenwood is out of business but this is based on the seat and design and it's been working well uh, probably the best thing we ever did as far as saving the amount of oil that we're using in a big old stone farmhouse uh, in a minute or two I'll be down in the basement I'll do video number three that will show um, show how the system ties into the uh, house side so right now, obviously what I have here, this is the out lead from the boiler. The outflow uh, simply runs out of the garage. The inlet pipe is coming in, and I ran it out the back wall of the garage instead of going through my concrete. Put a box. I'll show you that. I put a, uh, I was lazy, but it's worked well. I simply built a box on the back of the garage where the pipes 
come out of the garage down through they're all wrapped in insulation and super sealed inside that box and then of course they go underground and they travel across the yard and through into the basement of the house so I'll do video number three here in a minute when I get down in the basement. Thanks for checking out the whole system. Hope it answers some of the questions the guys have asked on the forum.